so enjoyed standing in the front row and just uh, following the leadership. Leaders uh, asked us, he asked us, uh, let's stand. And so I stood and, and concentrated on the words of the songs and just tried to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit through his anointed ones. And what a blessing. If you missed out today, if you didn't participate, if you didn't sing, you just can't be where I'm at right now. I'm ready to go because I've experienced the ministry of the Holy Spirit as God has chosen for Bell Road for the, for the church gathered here today. But if you didn't participate, just try to start participating now. Get your Bibles open. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6. I have uh, a sphere up here to represent Paul. Thinking about Paul's sphere of, sphere of influence, and it was that second missionary journey when he went out with Silas that he picked up Timothy along the way. Timothy would have been privy to everything that happened in Philippi, meeting Lydia and seeing God move in her whole household. And then when Paul and Silas was arrested and whipped publicly and then thrown into jail, I don't think that Timothy was in the jail cell with Paul and Silas, but he certainly knew about it, was probably praying about it, and then got to hear the great story of how God turned circumstances that seemed terrible into something awesome, something beyond anything we could imagine or think what might have happened. And now all these years later, Paul is writing to Timothy. And this is the life of faith. We're not in isolation. We have something to offer one another. And if we can even stir up the memories for one another, when we walked together hand in hand in unity and remind each other of what God did, this is what the older man Paul was doing for Timothy. And he's teaching Timothy in this letter something he knew about godliness. It's a memory verse that I preached over 25 years ago. I dug into it before I had ever studied Greek. I got out some of the helps, and I studied about what could be added to godliness that could make my life more full, that could help me to really appreciate God's chosen path for my life. Timothy is told in context, but godliness with contentment is great gain. And that's where I I learned that that Greek word is where we get the word mega. It's not just a gain. It's a mega gain, a great gain gain. And what is gain? It's not material gain. This is the context in which Paul writes this. He says, some, they're they're foolishly thinking that godliness is a, a way to material gain. Then Paul says, but godliness with contentment is way beyond anything money could buy. Way beyond anything we could think or imagine to ask for. Godliness with contentment is great gain. This week in Bible Study Fellowship, the men and women will be studying Numbers chapter 11 and 12, and there's an opportunity for contentment to take place, for great gain to happen. Oh, in the life of Moses, Moses' sister, such opportunity for great gain in Miriam's life. In Aaron's life, Moses' brother. In Joshua's life, the one who had been with Moses all along. Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. Amen? Do you really mean that? If we have food, Thank you, Lord, for this meal we are about to eat. I, I am contented when I sit down to a meal. Thank you, Lord. It's a good time to remember God, to be contented with the table that he set before us. Oh, and if I've got clothes to put on in the morning, thank you, Lord. But this also says I'll be content with these. I wonder if that's really my standard for contentment. Some food and something to wear. Is that my standard for how I'm going to respond in life? Because 
Godliness with contentment is an opportunity for me to go way beyond anything I could think or imagine. Any, way beyond anything money could buy. That's the potential of adding contentment to my godly walk. So, looking at Numbers chapter 11. Now, the people began openly before the Lord. Let's all stand. The people began, oh, I think they ought to be singing praises to God. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Oh, I knew we were going to get into Numbers 11. And I'm singing that song. And I'm thinking, it's a good thing to be in the house of the Lord on the first day of a new week with days ahead, all sorts of mega opportunities for gain. And I'm glad that I was obedient to the leadership the Spirit provided. Because said, why don't we all just stand? And let's sing this song together. The very Word of God. Let us speak to one another. Let us teach one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. But that's not the way it goes in Numbers 11, verse 1. See, even though we know that if we would be content with what God has provided, there is an awesome opportunity for gain. Unfortunately, we as the people of God, we're up and down way too often. And so today we're just going to look at this pattern. This pattern that uh, what's the on the other side of contentment is complaining. And even contempt. Do you look at yourself as a, a man of contempt? Are you a woman of contempt? Are you contemptuous? Most of us would say, no, I try not to be. How about complainers? Well, that's not as bad. Maybe it isn't as bad. Maybe it isn't. It doesn't sound as bad. But the people of God are, are found complaining openly before the Lord. My lips shall complain openly before you, Lord. Oh, I'll complain openly before you, Lord. Yes, I'll complain about what you provided, Lord. Oh, I'll complain, but I won't be contemptuous. Now, they were complaining about something that's very real, hardships in life. And most of us, we don't think it's that bad to whine and complain about the hardships in our life. But these things are written for us to learn something. And God might seem harsh in response to their complaints. But this is the word. It says, when the Lord heard their complaints openly before him, his anger kindled. His anger burned, and fire from the Lord blazed among them and consumed the outskirts of the camp. Then the people cried out to Moses, and he prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. Remember what I was saying about ups and downs? Oh, they started heading down toward contempt of God's provision when they began to complain. But when God moves... When God brings discipline, if you will, when God reacts, they turn back where they should be going. They cry out to Moses. And it doesn't say what they cried out, but what was Moses' response? He prayed. Moses is found interceding for the people of God. And so they're headed up. Heading up. Praise God. I hope they go on. I hope they dip into that area of great. Mega gain. Oops. Afraid not. I mean, golly, up and down. Up. Just a few verses. Contemptible people among them. Now, this is the only place in the Old Testament where this particular word is used. And so your translation might 
uh, might use a different word. And I want to look at some of the different translations. Contemptible people among them. Uh, one version says, the mixed multitude among them. Another says, the riffraff among them. The rabble among them. Foreigners among them. Well, contempt is the result of these ones who are mixed in. There's not really unity of the Spirit. There's no bond of peace. There's some message from outside. There's some message from the kingdom of darkness. Contemptible people among them had a strong craving for other food, for something other than what God has provided. And your version might say, um, these people among them had greedy desires. Yours might say, had lustings for something other than what God has provided. Now we're talking about food here, but all of us, what I want to do is at least find that line of contentment which we've heard the basic is content with clothing and food, the baseline. And if I'll uh, be content with that and walk a godly walk, my godliness with contentment will lead me to a great opportunities to grow. But if somehow I begin to listen to something from outside, not God's word, not let's stand and sing these words that have been prayed over, these words that are going to teach us, they're going to build us up, they're going to admonish us, they're going to encourage us. If I'm listening to some other voice, whether it originates from within me or some other voice in the mixed multitudes, that's craving, greedy, or lusting for something other than what God has provided, then I'm going to be living in contempt. Definition of contempt. It's the feeling that something is beneath our consideration. Something or someone is beneath our consideration is worthless. A disregard for something that should be taken into account. These other voices that are lusting for something other than what God has provided, now causes me to start voicing songs from the other kingdom. Lyrics that aren't really true to my conviction. I'm a follower of Jesus. Now, this is the Old Testament, but it is written to us as a pattern. What happened to them is a, a pattern for us to consider. Are we susceptible to the outside messages that would leak in and make us greedy or lust for something other than what God has sovereignly chosen for us in this chapter of our lives? Because the Israelites cried again. Before they were crying about the hardships in life, but now they're crying about the food, which is the manna that was provided miraculously. The Israelites cried again and said, who will feed us meat? We remember the free fish we ate in Egypt. Oh, yeah. How quickly we forget. We were slaves in that land. We crossed over that Red Sea miraculously. God delivered us out of bondage, but... Now we're singing a different song. I like that. The second song in your set said, I will recall the height from which I've fallen. I will go back and do the things I used to do. In other words, I repent. God, I, I want to remember you. I repent. This isn't remembering what God has done for us. This doesn't uh, celebrate our deliverance. This is yearning or lusting or greedy after something that's other than God's plan for us. We remember the free fish we ate in Egypt. Will you help out? Along with the cucumbers. Everybody say, cucumbers. 
the melons, the leeks and onions, and ah, the garlic, the garlic. Mm, mm, mm. A lust after something we're not experiencing today, but obviously isn't God's provision for us today. Regardless of how good it might have been someday in the past, it's not what God has chosen for us today. And now the end result, contempt. Not worth considering beneath me to even consider the value of what God has provided. A total disregard, contempt for something that really should be taken into account day by day sustenance in this passage in numbers 11 it, it takes a, a whole little chunk of time to talk to us about what manna is what it looked like that the people walked around and gathered it and they ground it on a pair of grinding stones crushed it in a mortar they boiled it in a cooking pot and shaped it into cakes there's a whole process here. It tasted like a pastry cooked with the finest oil. When the dew fell on the camp at night, the manna would fall with it. But you know, if you have reached this point of contempt, you're not going to praise God anywhere along the process. You're not going to thank him for any of the little things. Oh, the dew, um, we shouldn't expect every night that this manna is going to fall. We should look with expectation. Oh, Lord, if it be your will, we'll go out and we'll gather manna again. You will provide for us again. Thank you, Lord, not only for providing yesterday and the day before, but for providing for us today and tomorrow by faith. But when I've gone past complaining into contempt, I won't thank God. I won't. Praise him with my lips. I will not bless him with my soul. I will have effectively rejected God by rejecting his provision. Moses heard the people, family after family, crying at the entrance of their tents. You see how this contempt spreads? You see how poison complaining is? Grumbling and complaining. We always put it that way. Grumbling and complaining. How about just look at ourselves, individual, and stop and ask ourselves, Lord, does my voicing of complaints, does it help the people of God or does it hinder the people of God? Does it help another be content and maybe pass contentment into a great gain in her life? Or does it lead them toward rejecting you? I might get over my complaint, but the person who heard me spew complaints doesn't get over it and becomes contemptuous. Family after family, Moses heard the people crying at the entrance of their tents. When are we going to eat something other than manna? This spread. This was viral. The Lord was very angry. Moses was also provoked. The provocation led Moses to cry out to the Lord with the word, Why? Why are you angry with me? Why have you brought such trouble on your servant? Why do you burden me with all these people? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give birth to all these people so that you should tell me carry them at your breast as a nursing mother carries a baby to the land that you swore to give their fathers? Where can I get some of this other kind of meat to feed all these people? Now, this isn't a sermon to come down on Moses as a leader, but I want to put your, I want you to put yourself in the place of Moses. You might not feel like you have uh, that kind of calling from God to lead a great multitude, but God has called you. And really, we'll, we'll hear 
from the New Testament, there's really only one calling. We all participate in it. And so I want to encourage you today that this got to Moses. This virus of contempt got to him. What might have been able to happen in his life, what could happen in your life? If you could see things clearly, that sometimes the people are up and down, and when they're down, they need to be brought up. Moses has already interceded for the people, already in this very passage. But now he's experiencing his personal relationship with God about his calling and his questions. He says, I can't carry all these people by myself. They're too much for me. I just saw a friend on Facebook just yesterday. She said, I'm in too deep. Like, wow, she's right where Moses is. This is too much for me. Then Moses goes on, if you're going to treat me like this, please kill me right now. I don't think I've ever asked God to do that because I don't want that kind of end to the story where he gives you what you're asking for. He's going to give the people of God, the complainers, the contemptuous ones, he's going to give them what they asked for. But it's going to be a lesson. Now, but his relationship with Moses is different. He says, uh, Moses continues, he says, if you're pleased with me, don't let me see my misery anymore. The Lord answered Moses, bring me 70 men from Israel known to you as elders and officers of the people. Take them to the tent of meeting and have them stand there with you. Then I will come down and speak with you there. I will take some of the spirit who is on you and put the spirit on them. They will help you bear the burden of the people so that you do not have to bear it by yourself. So I just condense this passage. To me, the most important thing is God is heard and God is responding and God points to the Spirit. And in the Old Testament, we even talked about this in our last Wednesday night Bible study. In the Old Testament, the Spirit isn't spoken of as coming to live within a person permanently, but rather an, an anointing that rests upon a person for a season of time for service an anointing of the Spirit. But he is still the same Holy Spirit that today lives in you as a deposit guaranteeing your redemption in Christ Jesus. If you have received him, you've received his Holy Spirit, and he lives in you. And so I'm getting a clue here that Moses cry, kill me! You know, if you can't do something different, just take me out of my misery. God's answer to this cry of despair is, I'm going to put my spirit on 70 men and they will help you bear the burden of your calling. Now remember, I've asked you to put yourself in Moses' place. What is the burden of your calling as you see it? And what is it that's troubling you about your calling today as you experience your calling? I think the answer for us as New Testament believers, as believers in Jesus Christ, is going to involve other people upon whom the Holy Spirit has descended. Other people who, like you, have received this calling. And the Holy Spirit, the very Spirit of Christ, one with the Father and the Son, lives in other people who are going to help you, and you are going to help them. If you will be obedient, if you'll be content and press on toward greater gain in the Spirit. Because I have to ask, am I rejecting God in my daily life? Set my soul afire. We sang it the first service today. In my daily life. Make me a witness. Millions are groping in darkness waiting for your word. Send me. The choir went out yesterday to the nursing home and we say, send me. Oh, we say the words, but 
really the second song here today is, is the real full conclusion of Send Me. It's, Lord, I'm going to remember you, and I'm going to do the things I used to do. I'm going to remember the height from which I'm fallen, and I'm not going to stay down here in despair. I'm not going to complain and gripe. I'm not going to live in contempt. I'm going to repent, and I'm going to be content with food that you have provided, with clothes that you have provided. And I'm going to watch and pray and see what you're going to do with me, with my simple act of faith. Do we reject God? God told Moses, I want you to pick these 70 men, and I'm going to lay some of the spirit I've laid on you, I'm going to lay on them. Now, of those 70 men, um, some prophesied and only for uh, a short time, and then it was over. And then a couple men prophesied who hadn't even made it to the tent of meeting. And Joshua is going to bring up, uh, aren't you going to have them stop? And this is important for us because we're told to put off anything that gets in the way of God doing his work. If the Holy Spirit lives in the people next to you, the best thing you can do is encourage them to breathe deeply of the Spirit. Encourage them to celebrate the Spirit lives in me. God can use me. God will use me if I stay in a state of repentance. I don't want to reject you, God. So I'm asking you all, have we been rejecting God and what he's provided for us? in our daily lives? Or have we been content? And beyond contentment, as we've gone uh, to consider the, the dew and gather the manna, are we thankful for those little things? Those little things that make up a day-by-day check in our spirit. God is still here. God is still caring about me. God knows his calling upon my life, and God knows the people he wants alongside me. They will help me. I don't want to reject you, God. I want to do things your way. Paul wrote to the Ephesians in chapter 3, Walk worthy of the calling you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, accepting one another in love, Diligently keeping the unity of the Spirit with the peace that binds us. Now, I knew that the message for today is to receive one another in the Holy Spirit that lives in all of us who believe that this is God's manna for us. And it might not seem like much, But it is. You count day after day after day. Just this morning at the 8.30 service, I shared four different messages that came to me as a result of our choir going to the nursing home yesterday. First one was uh, specifically to me. A pastor, Pastor Lou, came up to me. He was at the same nursing home. And he shook my hand. He goes, hey, we haven't seen each other in maybe a year or two years. Hey, choir sounds great. He says, one of the ladies in our church is here, and I was here visiting her. But, wow, you guys really sounded good. It was right before the ladies were going to sing the very last song. And then uh, another lady told me, I came here from Florida, and I was a member of an evangelical church. It's so refreshing to hear the evangelistic message in the song. Sirius, I hope that encourages you as you were singing the lead for us all on send me. And we're all singing, send me, send me. To the ones who are lost and dying and hurting. This little lady at Emeritus Home said it was refreshing to hear an evangelistic message in the songs and in the word. Another lady told me, I had my son drive me to Bell Road Baptist Church because I wanted to see where the church was, the church that was going to come to us. Wow. We sometimes think 
that we just show up and God hasn't been there before us. They have no idea what's going to happen. I heard, maybe 15, 20 minutes before the choir sang, I heard a little announcement go out to those who had just eaten. Bell Road Baptist Church, the Celebration Choir will be here today. So stay seated. But I would think maybe that's the first time these people have heard this, but somebody had heard in advance enough to say to her son, drive me over. Let's find that church. Let's see who these people are. And then one other lady named Margaret came up to me and she said, I want to tell you something. Now, I was the guy that had just shared a seven-minute message from Psalm 23. And I said, we'd come hoping to encourage you today. She wanted me to know that her mother was also named Margaret. She said, my mother played the organ, big pipe organ, in the Congregational Church in Bel Air. She played that pipe organ Sunday mornings and Sunday nights and Wednesday nights for 20 years, for weddings and for funerals. And Somehow she had prefaced it with, I'm not much. I'm not here to tell you about me. I want you to know about my mother. Now what does that matter to me? I'm supposed to know about a lady named Margaret who played her role in her generation for 20 years with consistency such that long after she was gone, her daughter would be remembering one who had walked before her who had been consistent. Am I supposed to take that as a, as a word? Run the race. God has marked out for you. Keep on keeping on. It might not seem... Like much, but somebody's paying attention. Somebody's counting the days. So I heard John was, they were practicing one in the Spirit. I thought, I want to find a verse that goes along with one in the Spirit. So I found this one that Paul had written. And this is a word for us. It's a fresh word for us. For you and me both. Walk worthy of the calling you've received. With all humility and gentleness, the people of God are told in that passage from Numbers that Moses was the humblest of all men. And so I'm thinking about Moses. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, accepting one another in love, diligently, like the lady playing her organ, diligently, keep the unity of the Spirit with the peace that binds us. See, when Moses prayed out, Why? 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 Did I? Kill me! It feels like he's all alone. But he's not. God involves him in the process. Gather 70 men. And I'm going to put some of this spirit and, and I, I'd say some of this calling, some of this responsibility, accountability, this unity, the unction, I'm going to put this spirit on them too, and they will help you. I wonder if any of those little ladies, the few men gathered at Emeritus' home yesterday, I wonder if any of them needed encouragement. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope at your calling. Just as you were called to one hope at your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So I think the great gain for me is going to start with gratitude. For me, I told the Lord today. Kathy and I were driving to the church. and Lord, it's so good. We've already been up. We're, I, I've been sitting in the car singing one of the hymns, getting ready for an 8.30 service. Lord, it's so good to head to the house of God, to be with God's people. Expectation on the first morning of a new week. But I know how dry it can get. Even on the second day of the week or the third day of the week. Oh, Lord. Help us to not just experience it in the building. 
with the people. Help us to carry this with us through the week ahead. So I want to have that attitude of gratitude. I want great gain to be thankfulness. I don't want to just look at it. Yeah, yeah, I know. The Lord provided manna. Yeah. I'm getting kind of sick of it, even if it is the Lord's provision. It's boring. Doc used the, that word boring. Sometimes this most exciting call can be reduced to boring. If we've turned away from gratitude and dipped down toward complaining and more and more listening to the voice of contempt, whether it's coming from within or from without. Great gain. Gratitude. I don't know if Moses wrote this psalm, but tradition tells us this is a psalm of Moses. And I'm going to close with this. Satisfy us in the morning. With the morning manna. God, I'm going to ask you to do something for me that I don't seem to be able to do very well for myself, and that is to be satisfied. So, Lord, I'm going to ask you, satisfy me. Lord, I'm going to ask you on behalf of all of us, satisfy us early, early in the morning. Early will I seek thee. Isn't that, isn't that what they fed us today? The manna of the week's song service? Early in the morning, satisfy us in the morning with your faithful love so that we may shout with joy and be glad, gratitude, and be glad all our days. Oh, I, I hate the thought that any of those people we sang to yesterday are laying in a bed or sitting all lonely in a chair with nobody to talk to. I'd hate the thought that it was just an experience of temporary joy. But I would relish the thought that, wow, something that we said, something we sang, has stuck. And they're rehearsing it. Thinking it over. Just as John would experience the joy if, if you just said, wow, you know, John, you had a guitar solo there. It was real sweet. A, a whole section. And it was just so nice. And then you did it again for us. It blessed me. But more than the solos, the words, the choice, the, the harmony, the effort that went into this. Um, the piano, I could just hear distinctly at a certain point, toward the very end, just a real distinct point that I surely would have missed if it wasn't there. But it was there. She was there. I know the work that went into it. It didn't happen by chance. It's God's manna. But I can walk by it as if it's not even worth my consideration. So maybe you not, might not be in a spot where... You just feel like being proactive about your own Christian walk. But I tell you, from now on, if the worship leader says, why don't we stand? I'm going to ask you, why don't you stand? Get in on it. Participate. Look at the words that's been chosen for you and, and sing them. The word of God, Moses himself, would say something like this. Satisfy us in the morning with your, with your faithful love so that we may shout with joy and be glad all our days. Lord, help me with something I don't seem to be able to do for myself. Make me. Make us rejoice. For as many days as you have humbled us. So there's a gratitude for hardships. Okay, I, I, I'm in this uh, month of hardship. One month has gone into two months. How long is this going to last? It's been three years. It's been five years. Seven years, 12 years, Lord, make us, me and my house, Lord, make us, me and my church, make us rejoice for as many days as we have suffered, for as many years as you have humbled us, for as many decades as we have seen adversity. Is anybody... In trouble, we should pray. Is anybody happy? We should sing a psalm of praise. Is anybody sick? We should call upon the elders among us because they're filled with the Holy Spirit. 
They will pray a fervent prayer, a prayer, a spiritual prayer. They will help you just as Moses would be helped by other men of the spirit. You will be helped by spiritual people who God has called for this time. Let's stand together and sing this song that's been chosen for us. Let's sing it in the bond of unity. Looking ahead that tonight, Dan Clark is going to come in all humility and bring a message. And I've been encouraging people, come. Come to hear the word that has been prepared by this young man. Come with expectation. Men and women who believe in the power of prayer will be up at the front. If you'd like prayer for anything, please come to the altar. Let us sing together and then we'll be dismissed.